Hallelujah. <laughs> I changed to the 40 millimeter max vision, 68 degrees eyepiece. I can see the Markarian chain. The, the key for that is that you, you find the middle of the between the one of the stars of the um, Virgo in the cup of the Virgo and uh, Denebola and Zalmullah Sad as this call it in Arabic. And then you go in the middle, you find a star called Six uh, Coma Bernice. And that Six uh, star is a uh, top of a triangle and then another two, um, two stars uh, away to the right of it, to the left of it, it's slightly to the top. Then another two star. If you come from that asterism, which Six uh, Coma Bernice is the tip of it, you come down from that south, you will see the is unmistakable. You, you find the Markarian chair. Markarian chain is after Markarian, which was a Armenian astronomer who, who compiled the catalog and is his name. There are two members uh, in this chain, um, which are called M84 and M86. They are the brighter members of the Markarian chain. You can see them clearly. They're as bright as the yeah, you can see that half the brightness of the uh, M81, M82 Bodes and Cigar Galaxy. And they're unmistakable. When you find it, you, uh, you have to dark it up your eyes so you can see the rest of the chain. And these two brightest members are, are easy to find. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I found, I have spotted eight of the members of the Markarian chain. Uh, one of them, the other one, is also as bright as one of the M84 and uh, M86 member of this chain. So that's a nice addition. I, I, I thought that would be difficult. It's really easy. <laughs> oh, I'm using, by the way, the Skywatcher. Um, Skyliner 300p 12-inch Dapsonian telescope. And this is a max vision 40mm uh, 68 dv eyepiece. It's best eyepiece for, as used to be used as a finder, finder eyepiece. Okay, I'm using now the APM 20mm 100 degree eyepiece. M84 is a bit bigger and uh, more, you know, um, oval shaped. M86 is a, it's a spherical almost. They're quite bright, they have a bright nucleus. And it's very easy. I didn't see any spiral feature on them, but uh, um, I don't expect that. But probably they are, they are not a spiral. They're kind of pristine galaxies. Very beautiful. Everywhere is littered with the galaxies. In this area, everywhere you look, there is a galaxy. Then there are the NGC 44, 38 and 30. Yeah, let me look again. Uh, and NGC uh, 4435 and 4438, of course, they're, they're, they're close together and they're part of the Markarian chain, so I'm sure that I'm looking at it. Then you come at the pair of the NGC 4473 and 70, uh, NGC 7, uh, 4479, quite bright actually compared to the those uh, NGC 8486, sorry, M86, M84. They're quite bright. 
And between them, there is another fainter galaxy also between these and the previous ones. Oh, 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 I can see the M88 also. It's uh, bigger than the, almost as bright as the M84, M86. And, uh, but it's a spiral. There are two stars at the corner of it, and another one on top of it also again. So in the same direction as those other two. So quite distinctive. So you cannot miss it. This is beautiful. Oh god. It's full of galaxies in this area. <laughs> so we are looking through a window out of our Milky Way without much stars being blocking, you know, littering the view. Forget about the you know, you you forget about all the star clusters, nebula. You're just looking at the clear sky, looking through the universe. Through the universe. And through the universe, I think. And when you see the M88, a little bit toward the right, if you go, uh, you will find the M91, another galaxy, bigger, fainter, but is oval, unlike the M88, which is a spiral, and the other one is oval. This is fainter, center is brighter, but around it the halo is quite, quite like a uh, coma, sorry, comet. But I said coma, quite like a comet without being blue. Comets usually are bluish color. Oh, sometimes, most of what, whatever I've seen, at least have been blue at some stages of their development. These ones are just faint, you know, white, gray, milky, very yeah, faint, faint. Anyway, very interesting. I'm using the um, HTC, APM HTC 20 millimeters, 100 degrees. Uh, when you use the ETHOS 30mm, M88 becomes quite impressive. The two stars, which I mentioned in the spiral arm, the halo of it, very clear, and you can see the actually pattern of a kind of oval spiral shape. And the, the, move, um, the center is not uh, circular. You can see the brightness of one of the arms, or a collection of arms. Funny enough, when I put this first, I forgot to remove the cap on this end of it. <laughs> oh, it was practically black. Then I realized, why it is, I cannot see anything, <laughs> I cannot focus anything. When I removed that, I could focus and see everything. It's quite nice and very detailed. The sky background gets really dark when you use this. This is Skull Watcher hmm, Skyliner Flex Tube 300P 12 inch telescope. It's one of the best telescopes I've used. It's easy to manage, one person can handle it. It's heavy if you want all the time to move it, but you can do it. And the views are, I got with this is exceptional. It's really good. I like it. And uh, I recommend if you can afford, if you can find second hand, just get one of these. 
Um, about the go to, um, sometimes it can be, or well, most of the time, it's just a waste of time because you just kind of find. Uh, simply because most of the time your time will be spent just star aligning, two star or one star. Makes it really difficult, doesn't work in my opinion. So better to go with the manual one. If you want a bigger te a telescope that is guided, get a 8 inch one on a Dobsonian mount. No, sorry, on an equatorial mount. And yeah, just use that. Or Schmidt Cassegrain will do if you use a um, something like a focal reducer to make it more wide angle.